Good afternoon, <clears throat> and welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today we celebrate the memorial of the first martyrs of the Church of Rome on Friday, the 12th week in Ordinary Time. Our opening hymn is number 652, Praise to You, O Christ. Number 652, Praise to You, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Good afternoon. This memorial of the first martyrs of the Church of Rome is listed as an optional memorial. But in the opinion of this priest, at least, I don't think that the lives of the martyrs are optional. And why do I say that? We know about the great fire in Rome under Nero and how the believers were thrown to wild beasts. Some of them were set on fire and used as human torches. But also there were some, years later, there were some 979 others who were martyred none of which whose names are known. But just imagine in this day and age when we're so holding on to our lives and want medical treatment for every little thing and we don't want to pass away, would you really voluntarily give up your life for what you believe about what we're doing right here? Think about it. They died because they truly believed in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Will we really give up our lives for that? So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who consecrated the abundant first fruits of the Roman Church by the blood of the martyrs, grant, we pray, that with firm courage, 
we may together draw strength from so great a struggle and ever rejoice in, at the triumph of faithful love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. <clears throat> when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God the Almighty. Walk in my presence and be blameless. God also said to Abraham, on your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you that you must keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. God further said to Abraham, as for your wife, Sarai, do not call her Sarai. Her name shall be Sarah. I will bless her and I will give you a son by her. Him also will I bless. He shall give rise to nations and rulers of peoples shall issue from him. Abraham prostrated himself and laughed as he said to himself, can a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Or can Sarah give birth at 90? Then Abraham said to God, let but is Ishmael live on by your favor? God replied, nevertheless, your, your wife Sarah is to bear you a son and you shall call him Isaac. I will maintain my covenant with him as an everlasting pact to be his God and the God of his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I am heeding you. I hereby bless him. I will make him fertile and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall become the father of 12 chieftains and I will make of him a great nation. But my covenant, I will remain with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you by this time next year. When he had finished speaking with him, God departed from Abraham. The word of the Lord. those who fear 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And then a leper approached, did him homage and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I will do it. Be made clean. His leprosy was cleansed immediately. Then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The Gospel of the Lord. Every life is born of another life. There are no spontaneous generations. Every one of us lives inside another person until we are born to live inside a human community. We are begotten, not made. The whole human family is born of God, our first and most important relationship. You know, growing up, Abram did not know the Lord. He knew the gods of his ancestors, but he did not know the Lord. 
the Lord himself called Abram and Sarai from Ur of the Chaldeans and makes a covenant with them. The Lord renames them to be his, to be his own, and he promises Abraham an heir, countless descendants, and a land of their own. For their part, they must remain in right relationship with the Lord, keeping his covenant. That is such an important point. Abraham did not call God, God called him. Abram did not petition God, like I said the other day, oh, you know, wouldn't it be really great if I had a whole lot of descendants? He didn't say, you know, as far as I can see, I want all that land. No, the Lord promised it to him, and he said, this will be yours as you keep the covenant that I am making with you. Did you call yourself, or did God call you? And if God called you, what is the covenant that he made with you? Do you remember? Do you even know? The outward sign that they belong to the Lord their God is that every male will be cut. Every male will be circumcised. Anyone not cut, anyone not circumcised, will be cut off from God. The circumcision is a sign of the relationship with God. Let's say that one more time. The circumcision is a sign of the relationship with God, not the cause of the relationship. To be cut off from the supernatural community created by direct relationship with God is to die. To be not right with God, a person will not be right with others. To the ancient people, to be cut off from God, to be cut off from the source, is a cause of all illness, physical illness, mental illness, and spiritual illness. Without God, the community does not hold together. Without God, the individual does not hold together. They disintegrate. They disintegrate. They fall apart. Today in the gospel, a man has one of those skin conditions that were collectively called leprosy. As a result, he is cut off from the community. The man sees in Jesus an opportunity to be healed. I hope you see what's going on here. The man is cut off from the community. He can't go home. He can't go shopping. He can't go fishing. He can't be around other people. And if he comes anywhere near a group of people, maybe by accident, he has to shout out, leper, 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 so that everybody can run away for fear of their lives. But just think about the isolation that that causes. And this man has leprosy, but for some reason, he sees in Jesus an opportunity to be healed. He sees an opportunity to be restored to the source and to be restored to the community. Do you ever notice in reading the Gospels that Jesus is never sick? Jesus is never ill. In fact, none of the 12 are ever ill. Now, Jesus is not ever sick or ill. He's sometimes tired, but he's never sick. Jesus touches can you imagine? The man has leprosy. Jesus touches him. Would you do that? Would you take your chances like that? I mean, think about it. Jesus is bold. I mean, the man approaches him filled with disease. And Jesus touches the man. 
and then commands him to be clean. He doesn't ask him. He says, I will it. Be clean. Be cleansed. I mean, imagine the force of the touch of Jesus. That man in isolation all that time, cut off from his wife, his children, his family, his friends, his job. Maybe even cut off from his own self, wondering, what did I do? Why is this happening to me? And everybody is running away. And Jesus touches that man. So Jesus tells him that he needs to show his faith in God, that it has been restored. So Jesus directs him to the priest to follow out the commands of the law. And this previously cut off man is now returned to the community, returned to God, and returned even to his own self. In our day and age, and you all know this is true, as more and more people are estranged from God, it is increasingly difficult to stay healthy in a sick world. It's increasingly difficult to remain balanced, to be at peace within yourself, to, to be calm, to be collected. In baptism, we die to the world and are born again in God. However, if we don't maintain that relationship, if we don't maintain our covenant to God, remember, not a covenant we made ourselves, God makes a covenant with us, and our job is to maintain that covenant. If we don't, if we don't maintain that relationship, we end up being cut off from God, cut off from others, and even cut off from our own selves. We may still seem to be alive. Walk around in the street and tell me that you don't see people who seem to be alive, but you're really not quite sure. They look alive, but you're like, hmm, I don't know. We may still seem alive, but the supernatural life is gone. Look at those first martyrs of the Church of Rome. What was so important about that Eucharist? What was so important about that relationship with God that they were willing to die? The Lord is everything. When we understand that the Lord is everything, we would prefer to die in the body than to die in the soul. Let us stand to pray. We turn in faith to our Lord who always listens when we call. For all members of the church, may we be given the gift of fear of the Lord so as to avoid sin and to grow in our love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For civic leaders, may God guide them in working to promote the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are absent from the life of the church, may the Lord encourage them in their faith and deliver them from their doubt. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here today, whether physically or virtually, May God embolden our faith to trust more fully in his promises. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Maria Chen Yue Zhuang, for whom this Mass is offered, may God welcome them into his loving embrace. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear these prayers we have brought before you and answer them according to your holy and loving will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the Holy Martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give order to their faith, to their endurance you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have sent. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, 
the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. that we may be strengthened to maintain our covenant with God and each other. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait to blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Oh, 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 929, Let Us Be Bread, number 929, Let Us Be Bread. Let us pray. O oh God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God, and have a most blessed day. Thank you. 
Our closing hymn is number 773, When Jesus Came Preaching. Number 773, When Jesus Came Preaching. Kingdom of God, God's gift to the heart. 